So you've heard about magnesium, vitamin D, and zinc for brain health, but what about choline? You see, it's one of the most under-consumed nutrients in the United States, yet it plays a huge role in memory, mood, and mental performance. And in this video, we'll explore what choline does for your brain, why some people need more due to genetics, symptoms of low choline, and food and supplement strategies to optimize your brain health. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Giselle Rosa, a board-certified psychiatric nurse practitioner here to help you optimize mental health through genetics and integrative and functional medicine using a skills before pills approach. So what is choline and why does it matter? Well, choline is an essential nutrient, often grouped with the B vitamins, and your body uses it to build acetylcholine, which is a key neurotransmitter for memory and attention. It also helps to support methylation, which regulates your DNA and neurotransmitter balance and I have a video about methylation if you're not sure what it is and I advise you go ahead and check it out. But choline also helps to maintain cell membrane and liver health and you can actually make a little bit of choline in your liver but not nearly enough and that's why diet or supplements actually matter. And so let's look at choline and your mental health. You see choline supports memory and cognition and acetylcholine helps you form and retrieve memory. So when you're low in choline, you're low in acetylcholine, which can equate to brain fog and forgetfulness. And some studies actually link higher choline intake to better memory scores and reduced dementia risk. Choline also supports mood and anxiety because low choline levels have been associated with increased anxiety symptoms. And choline also plays a role in methylation, which helps to support serotonin and dopamine balance. And so when we look at methylation support, Choline actually helps to convert into betaine, which is a methyl donor. And if you saw my video on methylation, then you already know that methylation is critical for detoxing the brain, making neurotransmitters, and regulating your stress response. So people with methylation-related gene variants like MTHFR often have a greater need for more choline to keep that system running smoothly. And so let's look at those genetics and why some people may actually need more choline. First up is the PEMT gene, and this actually helps to make choline in the liver. And a common variant actually reduces choline's production significantly, and this can especially impact men and postmenopausal women because estrogen activates the PEMT gene. So women after menopause may suddenly feel those effects of low choline. Now another gene, the CHDH gene, helps convert choline to betaine for that methylation cycle. And some variants reduce efficiency, leading to less usable choline. And this leads to an increased choline demand. Another gene, the MTHFD1 gene, is a key player in folate metabolism. And a common variant actually increases choline reliance, which will increase your risk for fatty liver and methylation issues if your choline intake is low. Now, the MTHFR gene also reduces folate cycle activity, and this forces your body to actually lean more on choline for proper methylation. So if you carry the MTHFR 677T, then your choline needs may actually be increased. So here are some common signs that your choline levels might be low. So common symptoms include brain fog, memory lapses, low mood, irritability, anxiety, muscle aches or liver enzyme elevations, and even looking like you have fatty liver disease even with a healthy diet. And high risk populations for low choline include pregnant and breastfeeding women, vegans and vegetarians, postmenopausal women, men with poor dietary intake, and people with methylation-related genetic SNPs like we just mentioned. And unfortunately, 90% of Americans don't meet their adequate intake of choline. And so let's look at those food sources of choline. Well, the top sources come from animal-based sources, foods such as egg yolks, liver, beef, chicken, turkey, fish such as salmon and cod, and even dairy products will have a modest amount of choline. Plant-based products will also have some choline, but in smaller amounts. And your best plant-based sources are going to be soy products, tofu, edamame, quinoa, broccoli, mushrooms, wheat germ, and even peanuts. You also want to increase betaine from beets and spinach 
which will help to spare your choline use. And so here are some daily consumption targets. For adult women, 425 milligrams per day. Adult men will need 550 milligrams per day. And pregnancy actually increases that demand from 425 to 450 milligrams per day. So make sure you're getting enough choline in your diet to support your mental health. But sometimes diet isn't enough. So let's look at the supplement options. We have cetocholine or CDP choline, and this supports memory, focus, and brain repair. And dosages are anywhere from 250 to 500 milligrams, one to two times a day. This type has a high bioavailability, meaning it's well absorbed and also well tolerated, and can enhance attention and reduce fatigue. Another type of choline, alpha GPC choline, actually has been shown to cross the blood brain barrier very rapidly, and this helps to boost acetylcholine and physical performance. And dosages are anywhere from 300 to 600 milligrams per day, but up to 1200 milligrams have been used in clinical use. And then you have phosphatidylcholine or choline by tartrate. And this choline is general support, which is often found in your multivitamins. It's shown to be less effective for cognitive targeting, but can still be useful, especially um, using it for liver health or to fill in the general gaps of nutritional deficiencies. But we do wanna talk about safety when we're talking about supplements. So don't exceed 3,500 milligrams per day. That's considered the upper limit of choline. You wanna make sure you start slow and titrate up if needed and monitor the response. And it's always best to use supplements under the direction of your healthcare provider. You also wanna monitor for signs of toxicity and high doses of choline can actually produce a fishy body odor. It can create vomiting, excessive sweating and salivation, extremely low blood pressures and can lead to liver toxicity. And so why consider supplements and genetic testing? So if your diet is limited or your genetic blueprint shows that you require more choline, then supplements can actually help fill in the gaps that food alone may not cover because it's not just about your symptoms, it's about looking at the whole picture, your genes, your functional labs like homocysteine levels, and how your body is actually performing. You see, in integrative and functional psychiatry, we focus on giving your brain the raw materials that it needs to function at its best, because when your biology is supported, your mental health can truly thrive. And choline is a foundational nutrient for brain health, yet most people are unknowingly falling short. So if you're dealing with brain fog, low mood, or mental fatigue, it may not just be stress, it could be your nutrient status. So take a close closer look at your diet, your genetics, and your symptoms. A personalized approach can actually make all the difference. And if you're ready to explore a targeted plan for optimizing your brain health and mood, then go ahead and visit my website. The links will be down in the description. And if this video was helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with someone who could actually use better brain fuel. And as always, I thank you all for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.